Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am very, very excited to introduce Kaylin Chuck. He is a super talented concept artist. I am one of his big fans for many, many years. <laughs> I've known him for years. And um, he is an extremely talented artist, does a lot of great concept art. He has worked in games, he has worked in animations, and is currently working at DreamWorks Animation as a senior concept artist. So um, his official title is, uh, what is it, like look development? I guess you could say Vizdev, I guess. Vizdev, that's the it, term. yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, welcome, Kaylin. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. It's been a while. How, yes. how long has it been since I've seen you? I don't know. I think the last time I was like at a convention. So Kaylin goes to conventions, which is a, you know, a segue to say that you guys should be going to conventions because you meet amazing, talented artists like Kaylin. So um, I think the last time we saw each other was in, was it like, it wasn't Seagraph. It was um, CTN in LA. Yeah, probably. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, so we'll start with a couple of questions. And the first one's always about, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, cool. Yeah. So first of all, just thanks for, uh, having me here. Uh, I guess before we begin, we should probably put some things in the chat. Everyone can go thank Monica for having me here. Cause like normally, like I get asked to do a lot of like school stuff and I just always say no, cause I'm busy. So um, but when Monica asked me, I said, sure, no problem. That's just kind of how much respect I have for Monica. So just know that I don't, Appreciate that. I don't come and do these things all the time. So it's literally, if anyone else asked me, I would say no, but because it's Monica, like I was like, sure, I'll come by. I'll, I'll do, I'll say what's up. So, um, if you have anyone to thank for this, for organizing this stuff, it's, it's Monica. So just make sure that Monica gets her props. Thank you, Kaylin. That's very kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my name is Kaylin Shock. Um, do you want me to screen share stuff like right sure, now? Sure, yeah. You guys yeah. should see his portfolio. So you can see, you should be able to see like my art station right yes. now currently, right? Cool. Yes. Um, yeah, so my name is Kalen Chalk, um, biz dev artist over at DreamWorks. Uh, I live in the Bay Area, East Bay. Um, I've worked in video games, film. Uh, I went to the Art Institute of California, Orange County, um, you know, majored in game art design. Didn't know what I wanted to do half the time uh just kind of messed around and played video games then decided I wanted to be a concept artist somehow got a job and then just kind of kept working my way up um why are these things loading there you go and just kept kind of working my way up um throughout the years uh I graduated in 2009 so I've been doing this for a while um uh, one of my first teaching jobs is with the Art Institute of Sunnyvale it's how I met Monica um while I was over working at ILM and yeah, I've worked on various projects all throughout, um, worked on movies, films, games. Uh, some of the recent things that I've done is currently from uh, Kana Bridge of Spirits, an indie game that won Indie Game of the Year uh, last year. Um, trying to think what else, done all kinds of cinematics for, for movies and games and stuff like that. And yeah, and now currently uh, I, I freelance, not freelance, but I work full-time at DreamWorks uh, remotely, though I have to go into the, the studio every now and then for stuff. And, and yeah, so these are just things that I've done. Um, before that, I was working at EA or EA slash Glue and their mobile department doing all kinds of stuff. And yeah, this is just some of the work. So I, I mostly primarily work in uh, environment design, uh, world building, that's always been kind of my specialty. And that's currently what I uh, get hired to do right now. So for the most part, my days are just waking up, people give me tasks to do and things to paint and it's my job to kind of handle it. So yeah. Can I ask you a question much. really fast about- of course. Um, you know, you're scrolling through the pictures and I've noticed a, basically an evolution of your uh, work. So you started off pretty stylized and then the most current work is actually pretty photo real. Like it's very impressive. Can you tell us about uh, what led you to kind of like that evolution? Nothing really crazy. It's mostly just what the director wants. So because <laughs> I've worked for different companies, um, different companies will have different you know, wants and needs. So um, when I was working on like a, a platform fighting game, the style was much different, more cartoony and stuff like that. But then working on like kind of a, a, a game that required things to look very realistic 
required a lot more, a lot more matte painting and stuff like that. So for me, my, my style is just kind of like whatever it gets me paid, I guess. So, uh, if the, so right now, a lot of my DreamWorks stuff is way more stylized and that's totally fine with me. Um, so I enjoy both sides of the coin in terms of like realistic or stylized, um, yeah, the, the, the stylization and just the evolution was pretty much just whatever cl whatever clients I had because I had so many clients. Um, depending on what the goal was, it would just it would just change. So um, for stuff for glue uh, for EA was all realistic. So of course it was a lot of matte painting, a lot of heavy photo bashing. Um, stuff for uh, Apex Legends very much much more stylized, a little bit more realistic in certain places, but always trying to kind of push color and things of that nature. And then Kana, a lot about shape language, shape design. So uh, the best way that I can think about the evolution is what problem we're trying to solve. So uh, if the problem that we're trying to solve for something for EA was the realism and stuff like that, then obviously the style is going to change, right? Because we're trying to solve the overall look and feel, what kind of models we want to use, how much detail we want to get in there. For something like Apex, we were solving color issues, color and composition. So you can see that the, the you know overall texture and stuff isn't as important as the overall color that's being pushed. And then things like Kana, you know, very much more about the stylization, just kind of stylized, like the shape language, that kind of stuff. How do things how do things look? So I think for me, uh, or the question you always want to ask yourself is what problem are we solving? If we're solving a certain problem, if you can understand what problem you're solving, then chances are your art will kind of gravitate towards the solution for it. So it, it may change every now and then. So I don't say I have a particular style. It's just mostly like whatever the client needs. I just try to make sure that I'm trying to be a team player and solve that issue. That's fantastic. I also noticed that you have a mix of, well, you have photo bashing, but in some of your work, you actually use 3D modeling as well. Like I see some 3D and then you, it looks like you paint over it. Is that, is that a, a technique that you recommend? Um, it's, it's one of the things that uh, we do a lot of 3D and I'll, I'll probably show you guys some stuff. Um, I guess I can show some stuff right now, like uh, to kind of break it down um, here. I'll, break down one of the uh, farmland paintings. I'm gonna let that load up here uh, real quickly. So here is like a good painting of, of uh, not a good painting, but just a painting of the farmland area that I was doing for, for Kana Bridge of Spirits. And so um, to give you guys like a little bit of a reference here, what I was given was like that. And so that's kind of like a 3D, a 3D block out given to me by the level designer. And then my job essentially is to kind of like make that look nicer essentially because they're kind of like, okay, we'll paint something, give us the details, figure out, you know, what things look like. So um, for me, when I'm kind of painting stuff, it's kind of heavily, heavily layered, you know, like little by little, just kind of slowly adding details, figuring things out, um, figuring out shape language. I mean, you can kick, you can kind of zoom in pretty far there, <laughs> just depending on like how much time I have. Um, but yeah, so just kind of adding little ideas as I'm painting, I'm thinking about story, thinking about just cool elements, gameplay elements, just all kinds of stuff that I think could be like helpful um, to the level designers. Oh, there's that shitty temple. And yeah, just slowly kind of building stuff out. So um, yeah, it's definitely something that is that happens a lot in the industry using 3D. My my always thing that I always say is that 3D just doesn't make you a faster artist. It just makes you um, it doesn't make you a better artist. It makes you just a faster artist. So like if you do bad paintings in eight hours, you can do them in two hours. So if you still do like bad work, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't make you better. It just makes you faster at doing bad work. So um, yeah, there isn't much. It's definitely useful and very helpful because it can help your team a lot. Um, but not like necessary. There's plenty of people that I work with that DreamWorks that don't touch 3D at all. And they, they don't feel like they need to, and they're completely effective. So I think as long as the skills are there, then I think it's it's totally fine. That's really amazing seeing the, uh, how you change, how your art style is just kind of builds on this. And I mean, this looks, you know, okay. And then you just create this amazing personality to it where you um so just a little bit more about the pipeline so when you create these type of assets or uh, these drawings and then you add assets like the uh you know the house the bench or i'm sorry the fence and all these other things do they add those in the game as well or you know like how much how much do you get in the create how much 
I guess, how much input do you put in the creative process at the it, final? It really depends on just your team and, and like what they want from you. And luckily I think Ember Labs, one of my favorite companies to work for um, to this day because they value my artistic input. So it depends if, if companies really, if companies really want you to kind of like, like put your ideas in there, they'll tell you. And luckily I, I feel like, um, when I was doing other things for them, I feel like Ember Lab was one of those was one of those companies where they're like, Kaylin, like we trust your artistic opinion. Like, whatever you think that things could look like, like show us, do it for us. Like, if you have cool ideas, don't be hesitant to put them in there. So, um, and they don't have to go with it at the end of the day, right? But it's just we're having that kind of visual conversation about what things could be in the game, and then they could take it from there. So, I mean, my job was to kind of provide the inspiration, and then the modelers and level designers can kind of go from there and, and take it so it just really depends on like how early we are in production like if we kind of in that blue sky phase or like or do we already have an idea and we have to solve a certain a certain problem but luckily um yeah for ember lab the company that made kana uh you know they were always like very much gave me like a lot of freedom to kind of just explore like what i thought would be cool and stuff like that and so uh, when you when you see this level in here, it's definitely a little a lot different, but you can still see a lot of the kind of same vibes when you first get to those farmlands in the game. So it's one of those things where it's just kind of a stepping stone. Like your art is just a stepping stone that they can then take and then improve upon it. So then you get the modelers, the animation. So my job is just to kind of help them be a springboard to kind of make the final product. And so um, I see a question in there that says, you know, if, if you worked on um, both shows and video games, how was the process going industry to industry? Um, not much has changed really working from games to film. Only thing that you really need to understand, I think is just kind of more the pipeline and the business when you work in animation and games. And just overall, this the difference, like in terms of how you consume media. So I think the biggest difference between games and animation is games tend to be a little bit more interactive. So when you're designing things in games, you're always trying to think about how the player will move around it, how can they interact with it? And then usually for film, it's just more just visual, like how will the person in the movie theater see it and how does it make them feel? So that's kind of like the biggest, um, the biggest thing that I feel like is the difference is like we're always kind of getting these story beats and we call them movie moments that we want to have on the big screen versus you know games it's kind of like okay well what happens when the player does this what happens when the player does this what does that look what does that look like what does that feel like so hopefully that answers uh that question you also worked in films like star trek and things like that so you've worked in sci-fi it looks like you're working more naturalistic here and you also have like a lot of um nature scenes um how it does it if somebody gives you this problem how do you resolve you know like if you've never done a sci-fi scene before like how do you figure it out um usually reference i mean you're gonna draw it's important i think when you're an artist that you have a process of problem solving things because you're not you're always going to be tasked with probably drawing something that you've never drawn before so you have to have some kind of process in place on how you explore sketches that's why fundamentals is really really important is because like I don't think most artists that I know have drawn everything there is to draw in life, but because they have a good process and they have the confidence to figure things out and they have the confidence to break things down that they can then learn to draw it. And so I think it's important that like you have a good process in mind, like on how you create things. So that way, when you get to a point where you, where you haven't created something before, you can then be able to analyze like, you know, what you think sci-fi is or, or how to kind of make that and then go from there. So like, um, you know, when I'm doing like, these were done for like Apex Legends, um, figuring out, you know, a lot more kind of these hard edge shapes and stuff like that, you know, having 3D models can kind of help you. Um, but then also with stuff like this, it's also more about like composition, you know, lighting, figuring things out, like how do you want it to look? So I think for me, whenever I'm doing like sci-fi stuff, like it doesn't really change per se to me. It's just like, the shapes are a little bit different, but in terms of what I'm trying to solve, in terms of color and atmosphere, all those things are kind of there. It's just the it's just a little bit of a different combination, in my opinion. So I don't think it really changes. Um, it's just more so just like your ability to analyze things. So you know, I'm looking at construction stuff. I'm looking at you know tech and stuff like that. All those things are just things you can put into your visual library. And I think the bigger your visual library is, 
then you can then kind of draw from those shapes and then kind of, you know, kind of mix and mash it to whatever you need it to be. Cause even at, even at DreamWorks, I have to do a lot of sci-fi stuff and I got to do a lot of like organic stuff. And so I have to be able to kind of just bridge that gap that both are kind of the same to me. You know what I mean? That's, I think that's really valuable. Um, I've heard some people use Pinterest a lot. Do you use Pinterest to do your visual library or do you have like, you just download a bunch of stuff in your, like, how do you, where do you store your visual library? Um, I kind of have like a reference folder that I use. Um, I think your best visual library can just be in your head um, just from going out. And then your next visual library can just be your sketchbook. So like, you know, I have a sketchbook and whenever I see something or it's interesting to me, I'll kind of draw it and figure it out. And, you know, like I had to figure out some mechanical thing. And I didn't understand it. So what did I do? I got reference. I drew it for a while, started to break down the different parts of it. And then, then I kind of had a better understanding of it. Then I could go and draw it. So again, having, like I said, having that process of how you can break things down that you may not know that you may not know how to draw or understand um, will make it easier so that now when you do something different, you, you, again, you have that kind of playbook or game plan to handle it. So um yeah, I mean, it's different for everybody. You know, I, I have a Pinterest account. I have a reference folder. I have, all, I have my phone for the most part. I see them like, oh, that's cool. I'll screenshot it, save it to my Dropbox. Um, it just really depends. I think if anything, I think the biggest thing is just always being aware that inspiration can come at you at any time, whether you're on the freeway, whether you're walking your dog, whatever, whatever you're doing. I think if you're open to it, like visually of things that you can see, like color and design and whatever, then I think there's just more stuff in your head that you can use later. So. That's awesome. Is asking a question. Um, this is probably a little personal, but what was one of your early big screw ups and how did you recover? Uh, big early screw ups. Um, I think one of my very first ones was I, I got like my very first job working on some like Facebook game. And I thought I was like dope and like, it's like my very first job. So I got really excited, but then I didn't really know what concept art was. And then like, I immediately like <laughs> within like three weeks, like I, like they're like, this guy's not ready. And I just immediately got like, let go from the project. <laughs> um, that's I'm because like, you know, I was just painting stuff that I always wanted, you know? Mm. And then all of a sudden when someone tells me what I have to paint and right, I didn't, I didn't know how to draw things. I didn't know how to, you know what I mean? Like they're asking me mm -hmm. to draw things I never drew before. I didn't have a process in mind on how to like do those kind of things. I, I wasn't very analytical and I didn't know how to solve problems before I was like, oh, I just paint pretty pictures. But then it's like, no, you're not solving the problem for our team. And so uh, having to learn that and then get fired, obviously, wasn't the greatest feeling. But then it just kind of motivated me, me more just because I was like, I didn't do well. I need to like figure these things out. So it was a very humbling experience to kind of learn like how much I didn't know. Cause I think at that point in time, I was like thinking that I was kind of like dope. Um, and then I got humbled really quickly about how much I didn't know. So in terms of like recover, I think having like having good people around you that will talk you out of mm -hmm. things. I definitely got down on myself, like in terms of like, man, like I messed up and, and stuff like that. And then, you know, I had friends that were like, yo, man, like, you know, it happens, keep going, don't worry about it. And then, you know, then you just keep, you just, you just kind of just, it's like getting punched in the gut. You just take it and you keep moving on. So, um, yeah, this is kind of how, how it worked out for me. So I think just having uh, positive people around you, hardworking people around you, I think is always a good idea because those people will kind of, will kind of help you when you're not feeling your best. Like I always say, right. like it takes a village, you know, mm -hmm. um, to make it in this industry. So I probably wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for half the people that were always kind of believing in me um, and just kind of helping me out. Um, the other one was when like I got put, I was on a full-time job and my very next job after that still had some growing pains on like how to like keep up with just the amount of work that was being done and then I was on full-time and I got I got put work to part-time and that was kind of embarrassing and then you know I felt I felt like I wasn't I was kind of in my own feelings a little bit about things I was like you know this director is like this and that this and that mm -hmm. and then eventually my friend called me out and said you know what you just need to like shut up and then just do the best work you can and shut them up and that's what I did so I just over the weekend, just like really like grinded on some of my stuff. And then I came back like after being put on that part-time and then like immediately the work that I thought was good, you know, when I, when someone kind of tells you like, do you really think this is the best you can do? 
And I realized like, you know what, I could be doing more. And then, you know, I just put my head down and worked. And, and then immediately, like the next week, my boss was like, yeah, don't like you're back to full time again. Like, you know, awesome. so a lot of times, you know, the answer is like, if you're not starting or if you're not getting what you want, a lot of times, if you just put in the work, um, you know, it'll be recognized. So, you know, I have a similar story where I was very humbled by, like, I was trying to create art for me that I thought was cool. But at the end, I had to remember that this art is for the client and that's the number one priority. Whatever I felt didn't matter. It was the paycheck. <laughs> and as long as my client was happy, that's all that mattered. That was actually something very hard to learn. Um, let's see. Well, first of all, you have uh, you have Blender open. Before I ask the questions in the chat, you know, um, you're using Blender, but I also know that you used to use Maya. Is there a reason why you switched? Or do you feel like one tool is better than the other or? Yeah, Blender is kind of like, Maya is kind of dead to me, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Blender is like free and it's like, uh, okay, you it's can free. do like way more in Blender in my opinion, in terms of like, I think it's just more intuitive artistically, um, mm -hmm. things that you can do with Blender. Like Maya, like Maya was good, don't get me wrong. But then like, once I, but then Maya, like everything just like took longer. Like there are so many more steps to do things. And I, I know that's, that's changed over, over the course of time, but then like Blender, like once Blender 2.8 came about and I took a class on it, like I was like, wow, this is way easier than Maya. And then I was just like, you know, but to, but to each his own, honestly, like whatever gets you good work, then like, it doesn't really matter. Like if you're a good artist, you can use ZBrush, you can use 3D Coat. Like I know people that, you, that still use like um, Moto or whatever, like mm -hmm. it, it, octane whatever it really depends like what you're into i just know that like blender like clicked for me and then it, it just worked so like this is like some stuff these are models that were actually given to me um by the by the studio when we were trying oh, to wow. figure stuff out so they're like here's the here's like a, a quick model you know i'd actually like retexture things because it wasn't looking right like when i was when i was rendering it out so i had to retexture a lot of stuff and then and then kind of get it to what i wanted it to be and then figure out the shot. Um, you can see like the lighting wasn't like working correctly. It was supposed to be like a big building. Like if you ever watched the Apex Cinematic, um, I think it's season seven cinematic, you'll see like the um, uh, Pathfinder and uh, I forget what's her name. Um, what is her name? Uh, not Rev, I forget. Um, but you'll see the Octane and the uh, other person running towards the ship, but they wanted this like big shadow behind it and they wanted mm -hmm. the shadow underneath it. So in order to do that, I had to like make this big giant cube and kind of like um, fake fake the lighting in order to kind of make that make that work. Uh, sorry, I have to freak, I have to ask myself Apex Legends Legends because I want to know what the person's name is. And nobody I in the audience knows what he's asking. <laughs> Apex Legends. I, I just want to know. Uh, I just forget her name, and I just now it's just bugging me, and I'm like. <laughs> I'm the same why. way. By the way, I, I play. I Apex need to know. I and mean, right now, I'm like, I'm drawing a blank because it's not, it's not Lifeline. It's, uh, it's not. Loba. It's not Loba. It's Rampart. Rampart. There Rampart. you go. Sorry. Okay. So it was uh, Pathfinder and Rampart are like running towards us in the cinematic. But yeah, I had to make this, uh, this lighting situation kind of work, um, in order to make that, make that work. And then, ironically, uh, what I had to do was to kind of save time. I had to like play the game on my PS4 or I think my PS5, and then I had to screenshot it, and I brought that screenshot in and painted over it. Oh, that was smart. It's kind of funny, but then, like, it was actually a pain, because I would land in this area, and then people were trying to kill me in the game. <laughs> it was like a battle royale, so I'm like, leave me alone. I'm trying to get, like, this perfect screenshot, so I had to, like, kill a team off, and then, like, just get my screenshot, and then just, like, log off. Um, so it's actually a screenshot <laughs> that I then painted over to get the right look, so that way it was all consistent with, like, the area and stuff like that, so... Um, but yeah, that's just uh, some of the stuff that I've done, and you can see just how the the 3D kind of kind of mm -hmm. translates a little bit, um, you know, in the uh, from 3D to 2D. Right. And so yeah, it's always it's always good to have like a good idea of of you know how much 3D you want to use, how much 2D you want to use. And so I always use like the eight the eight twenty rule. So either it's mm -hmm. like either it's like eighty percent 3D and twenty percent Photoshop, or like twenty percent 3D and eight percent Photoshop. Oh. It was probably like an 80 20 or probably a 50 50 because like this was all um 3d and then i had to paint the back from scratch for the most part so i think in the image you'll kind of i mean there's a lot of like and there's a nice little clown pass and stuff like that if i turn all this stuff off someone said how many attempts uh just a few no, nothing too crazy um but yeah you can see uh some of the painting i had it mm. like yeah like you can see 
my teammate right there, his teammate's name. <laughs> I tried to I actually got in trouble. I tried to put my names on the banner, like me and my team that I used to play ranked with. I tried to put it on the banners there, and they were like, "Who is that?" And I was like, "Oh, never mind." And they're like, "Can you take that off?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> okay. So apparently that I got caught for that. But oh, that's too bad. That would be tried. funny. Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is just kind of showing off just a little bit of different ideas and how it kind of how it kind of works. Or so just seeing this again, the creative process. It's it's so different. It can it can literally be diff- It can literally be anything at any time. So whether it's kind of like these small black and white sketches, trying to like figure out like um, composition and stuff like that, or you know figuring out color. Again, I think the biggest mm-hmm. thing you can learn is just to. Um, just to know what problem you're solving and then once you know what problem you're solving the process kind of reveals itself on the best way to go about it whether it's lines whether it's 3d um whether it's a, a quick sketch you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. all it all just depends on like who you're trying to do work for is it for the modeler is it for the lighter is it for the animator um the more you know about the pipeline i think the more effective you can be as a as a biz dev artist that's that's amazing. Um, let's see. We have another question because you talked about sketching. So, um, have you made a switch to digital sketching, such as an iPad Pro, a Surface Pro, and in and if not, how often do you find yourself sketching from life versus reference libraries? Um, it depends when I have time. Usually, my sketching in a sketchbook is when I'm on vacation, or when my wife asks me to draw stuff for her randomly mm-hmm. for whatever reason. She's like, "Can you draw me and Toby?" And I'm like no <laughs> she's like why not and I'm like I, I don't want to and it's like well can you draw this then she'll be like can you draw like the other day I was doing like my wife is the head of like her bone marrow department at her lab and she's like can you draw like a logo for our bone marrow department and I was like what the hell so I was like doing these like stupid logos of like bone marrow. <laughs> and I was like I don't know what you want you know what I mean so you get hit up by family all the time to do random drawings that's true uh when it comes to painting on tablets I have a tablet I just don't like to use it because currently like you can't the pens don't have rotation on them so like my pen has like a rotation on it uh if you have the art pen and so because of that, it's like way easier to paint. So until the iPads have like rotation, I probably will never go to an iPad. Like it's good when you're on vacation, but until it can like rotate like different directions, because mm. I'm just, I'm rolling the pen in my fingers. It's a lot easier to kind of like get different angles. So like this brush is a good example because it can be, it can be thick, but turn to the side, it can be thin. So just because just so just how like you're rolling the brush in your fingers, you can easily kind of get like a tapering or something like that when you're painting. So you can easily get smaller, um, smaller angles with your brush. So if I'm like painting a tree, like, and it's much more smoother. So Mm -hmm. until like they can mimic that with the art pen, because it isn't really a screen issue. It's mostly like, um, it's mostly a pen issue and most pens, for whatever reason Wacom like just has that down like they just they have like the better kind of art pens so like if I just press small like it's a lot easier to kind of figure things out and I can easily kind of turn that brush and make like some kind of like graphic trees it's usually like when I'm painting foliage at work and I need to like paint a lot of it this is exactly how I do it and it's like way way easier to kind of figure things out so until 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 brushes or until an iPad has a pen that has like rotation properties on it uh it doesn't really matter the program it's more of a hardware issue for me if anything but when i do paint or if i do draw i'm usually on vacation like if i'm on vacation like if i'm in like hawaii visiting family then i will usually have a sketchbook with me and i'll just make sure that i go at some point and just draw some of the you know ocean rocks or foliage or trees um just because it's obviously just like you know it's a beautiful island why not so Mm -hmm that's kind of how I am when I sketch but more times than not I will I'll do some studies like digitally some stuff like that but more times than not I'll just sketch random things in my sketchbook um and I kind of just go from there so like currently like this is like my sketchbook right now and there's just all kinds of just random crappy drawings uh that do save me a lot of time like in terms of figuring things out uh, whenever I'm doing stuff for clients. So, I mean, there's, they're, they're not that great, but they're just, again, you're problem solving. You're just trying to figure out like an issue. 
that then when you go to digital, you can figure it out. I think I was in Hawaii actually with this one and I was just drawing some plants and stuff. That's pretty. Doing studies. So um, they don't have to be like these amazing like Inktober studies or whatever. Like, you know, it's just whatever helps you like explore, you know, whatever your process is to help you understand something better, then, then that's the way you want to you wanna do it. Yeah. It's a great answer. Um, people are asking about portfolio work. You know, they, these are budding artists who are really interested in, you know, getting a job mm -hmm. as a concept artist. So uh, for your portfolio, what do people look for? Do they want different types of styles, designs, or would they want to see if you know the fundamentals or, or both? How do you feel about portfolios? What, what's a good portfolio? Um, a good portfolio to me, I think, is a tailored portfolio. So whatever you're applying to, you should want to have work in there that is exactly what we're doing because like you don't have time to really train people like those days of like having an apprenticeship are kind of like done mm -hmm. so like when i whenever i've had to hire people my first thing that i look for is like is the quality of work good a and then does it fit with what we're doing you know like do i have to train this person and so usually like if i'm unsure about it then that's when you'll get an art test and usually art tests are for that reason because it's like okay the person has like good fundamentals good work but their style and the way that they're doing stuff like isn't matching what we're doing. And so we're not sure if they can, if they're capable of doing that. So we need to kind of maybe test them to kind of make sure like, oh, hey, like we don't see any kind of work like this that we need that we need you to do. And because you don't have any, would you be willing to do an art test for us so we can kind of just make sure that like you can do that because you don't want to hire someone and then like they're not good at it. And then you're just kind of wasting your time. So the biggest thing that you want to think about is like, you should be able, they should be able to hire you or look at your work and be like, if I were to hire this person today, could I put them to work? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, can I put them to work right now and have them start doing stuff for the team? And if the answer is no, then they probably won't hire you because again, we don't have time. So for me, like, if I feel like I have to train you or I feel like you can't be, a, you can't start uh, creating for the team right away, then like, it's kind of an issue for me. So I guess the best way that I like to put it is I think of like, a restaurant or like food, like food's kind of a good way to think about it. So like if you were like a chef and let's say you were applying for like a sushi restaurant and you were to kind of like apply for the job, you know, what would you, what would you cook for them? Right. You wouldn't cook them a burrito. You would cook them like different variations of sushi and like Asian food and stuff like that to show them that, you know, what's going on. So, so the art is kind of like the same way. So like if you're applying for Blizzard, you're not going to show them like Naughty Dog, you know, matte paintings, Last of Us stuff. Why? Because it's not in the same genre. Right. Or if you were applying for Naughty Dog, you wouldn't show them cartoony stuff. You would show them kind of realistic stuff, right? That's like Uncharted or kind of zombies or just kind of like post-apocalyptic stuff. So you want to tailor your portfolio, I think, to what you're into. So I want to know that if I look at your portfolio, that you get the style, you get what we're doing here. And like, I know that if I hire you, you can be able to kind of contribute right away. So I kind of look at, I kind of think of it like food, right? Like if you are applying for like a Mexican restaurant, you're not going to like cook them Japanese food because that doesn't make any sense. So just look at the port, look at the company, look at what kind of their tastes are in terms of like food or art, and then just make art that kind of fits in that, in that way. And then usually that problem will solve itself. Um, you know, granted, you always want to have a little bit of your own artistic voice in there. But I think the biggest thing is like, can a person contribute right away? Or can a person like just get the work done? Cause I don't have time like to teach you like all the basic things of like how the style works or, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I just yeah. want you to come in and get work done so we can all go home. That's kind of how I. <laughs> and, and ship it and ship the the title. Otherwise. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. Millions I don't really go care down the drain. <laughs> exactly. I don't really care about like you know, what you want to draw or whatever. Like I need you to come in to get the work done so we can all go home. Like I, I'm, I'm hiring you to make my job easier. So like, if, if I have to then do more work with you, you're not making my job easier. And at that point, I might as well just do the work myself. So, um, so how do you get to that point though? Because, you know, as you, you studied arts and everything and, and you even got a degree on it um, and you did get a job and, you know, you hit some bumps along the way. How do you continuously grow as an artist? You know, so did you keep practicing. Did you take more classes? Did you take master classes? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I took classes and stuff like that, but I think I just, I just generally like painting and drawing. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you generally like something, you're going to, you're going to spend time doing it. It's like video games or like reading or anything else. Like if you like doing something enough, you'll just do it a lot. And eventually you just keep doing it. You're going to get, you're going to get like proficient at it. So for me, uh, yeah, like I sucked at it in the beginning, but I generally like doing it. So I have like thousands of paintings and thousands of sketches that are terrible. That'll never see the light of day, but it was just me. Like, I didn't care. Like I just, I was just having fun. So if you don't love what you're doing, it's going to be really hard to get a job. I would say just because again, there's probably someone that does love it and they're going to do it all the time. So that's where it's like, just make sure that you do something that you're really into. So for me, like when I was doing, when I was kind of coming up, like, yeah, like I paint all these kind of environments and and maybe none of it was kind of like necessarily like applicable to like get hired. But then eventually a company came along like Ember Lab and they're like, oh, like all stuff that you're doing that that you love to do for, for like, for fun, we'll pay you to do it. And I'm like, okay, sweet. So that's kind of like, you got to stick to your guns a little bit. Like if you like painting like certain things or you were really into something, just keep doing it. And eventually you'll probably find a company or, or a project that is that, and you'll be a shoe in for it. Um, sometimes you got to bend a little bit and maybe do things that you don't want to do so that you can be hireable. That's just a part of life. Um, you know, so I had to learn like, you know, vehicles, learn, learn some mechs, learn some sci-fi things I wasn't necessarily into in the beginning. But, you know, it's just a challenge that you learn and you kind of just learn to take it with a grain of salt and you just learn to just view it as a way to, as a, something to get better at. So for me, like you should, you should enjoy the grind and enjoy the process and you should always be trying to find ways to get better. I mean, this industry is kind of like a marathon on a sprint. So anything that you're learning now will probably obsolete like in a few years. That's why fundamentals are really good because programs will change, but the fundamentals never do. So um yeah, you just have to, if you suck now, just don't quit. Just keep doing it. Cause I wasn't that great when I first started, but I generally like painting it. So I just didn't care if I was bad at it. I just wanted to keep going. So, and I, I also want to say that Kalen is one of the hardest working people I've ever met. Like he works, like he loves his stuff. This is his passion and he does it for work. And then he comes home and does it for fun. So, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely a passion career. It's like, you gotta love this stuff. If you don't love it, you need to find something else. I would say back in the day, I was definitely painting a lot. Like nowadays though, I will, I, I would, I, I don't want to give the wrong idea. Like I definitely, I haven't done like personal painting in a very long time. Um, not because I don't, I don't need it or whatever, but I think it's because I'm just doing like not high quality, but I'm working at a high level, like eight right, hours you're a, a day senior. now. Mm-hmm. Now I need a break a little bit, but when I was getting better, when I was like not at the level that I am now, I was definitely painting all the time because I wanted to get to um a place where I can be financially like stable and just be chill so it depends you got to find that work-life balance it's um to me how do you manage it like I don't really know like to me I was like I'm not where I want to be yet so I guess I'm going to keep going so Mm -hmm. for me it was just like I just didn't want to be broke so (laughs) I had I had student loans and shit to pay off so failure wasn't really an option for me you know like I'm in a place now where like I just paid off my mom's debt like completely like in oh March. congrats that's huge you know what I mean so it's like you paid your student loans and you've also paid your mom's it's yeah so it's like that's what it, that's what it is you know what I mean like if you don't have your reason on like why you're trying to do stuff like or why you want to you know what I mean like mm-hmm. then like what's the point so for me it's like it's to take care of my family like it is a job like much as I love it it is a job so mm-hmm. it's like I got to take my, my, my wife on vacation. I got to take care of my dog. I got to take care of my moms, you know, like, you know, like it's a good feeling to, to talk to your mom, my single mom that, that raised me, that supported me. and was like, Hey, you ain't gotta worry about bills no more. Like I got you. Like I got all this stuff about this freelance. I'm good now. So if you want them, like you got to have to work, you know what I mean? So like, I don't, I shouldn't have to like, kind of tell people like how to stay motivated or like how like if you're underqualified like you know what I mean like everyone's underqualified at this point so it's just like everyone sucks so just keep going like you know what I mean like technically I suck because I get my ass kicked by even better people at Dreamworks every day but I just view it as motivation to keep doing what I do and that's what it is so um, it's important to have a balance though like have something outside of art I think people tend to put their 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 personal like worth into their art so if their art isn't good they think that they're not worth anything i don't think that's a good healthy thing to do um so it's good to have other like hobbies like my biggest hobby is soccer right now like i used to play competitively i used to play club college so now i do that a lot as a way to kind of like kind of decompress from art and then when i come back to art it feels new to me it feels good to me 
Um, so it's, it's good to have stuff like that um, to, in order to do it. Uh, in terms of the other question was, you know, what job location sites you recommend? Um, it's really, really hard to, in, in my opinion, job application sites don't really do because like, I think the only reason why jobs, why, why sites put their job applications on websites, I think it's like legally they have to, to avoid yes. like discrimination That's correct. like suits. But like normally by that time, they've already hired somebody. So normally it's always internal. It's always like, hey, who do you know? And so it's a lot of like nepotism, which I don't actually agree with because it, it kind of creates a lot of nepotism because you just hire your friends. And if, if you have like, and if that's the problem with the game industry, right? It's like Blizzard, Riot, all like this toxic, like sexual harassment. How does it start? It starts because it's like, oh, who do you know? Well, I had this friend, you know? Right. So you start hiring all, if you're toxic and you hire all your other toxic friends, <clears throat> no one's going to hold you accountable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This big giant like boys club. So something I don't actually really agree with, uh, but uh, it's usually internal. Like right now, they're looking for art director for Kung Fu Panda right now. I don't think they're going to announce it, but they're just like, hey, do we know anybody? So that's where like what Monica said is networking is really important because you have to go to like CTN and Lightbox and GDC because like if you want to get to know people and like right. be able to see it, like anyone, like a thousand people will apply for a job, but I'll always remember the person that I met in person and talked to, you know what I mean? So you got to have good work, A, but then you got to make sure that you're meeting the right people so that way you can kind of get your stuff streamlined. So there isn't, like, you can look at websites, but, like, the likelihood that you're going to apply amongst a thousand people all over the world and get the job, unlikely. But if you live in California, you have a big, a huge advantage that you can go to, like, these things that are relatively close to you. I mean, I remember at Cogsville, I got in trouble for making people go to GDC for whatever reason. <laughs> They're like, we don't want to go. That shouldn't be allowed. And I'm like, all right, fine. All those people don't have jobs. Like, I think out of all of them that, like, were complaining, none of them yeah. have jobs now. And it's not surprising. I mean, it's so. networking is such a, so, so important. Like, even for me, like my positions, <laughs> I've always, it's always like the people that you know. That's why you need to make sure that you're stay in contact with your friends that you are have a good reputation in the classroom and um and going to conventions just means that you get to meet people that are as passionate as you are and also you get to you know just make people just make friends because they're the ones that are gonna you know recommend you to come in you know there's a question here i think it's a little technical what are your favorite abr painting brushes that you normally use or any painting brushes do you recommend um it's all personal preference at that point like one of my favorite brushes is this brush it's a square brush that's all it is and the only oh. thing the only reason why I like it I have no idea where this brush came from only reason why I like <laughs> it is because it has a hard edge on the bottom and a soft edge on the top so if I turn it a certain way I can create like a nice kind of soft edge if I turn it a certain way I can make a nice little hard edge so like that's pretty like if I go this direction right here like you can see like the serrated edges on it Mm -hmm. but then the, right here it's a hard edge in this way it's a it's a softer edge so that's like the only thing the reason why I like it so it allows me to have like nice edge control and that's kind of how like I I paint like you know just like I can ch I can change the angle and I can kind of paint back and forth and it's really really nice like it kind of it creates these nice little strokes right here that like so nice. you have like a super, super hard edge right here, but a really soft edge right there. So stuff like that, like it's really, really nice. Like I personally really like it. So that's why I love the art pen and the reason why like I still am never going to switch over to like any kind of iPad. Like as soon as the iPad or something like makes that, I probably will drop like Photoshop because I can just paint anywhere I want to. I can paint on the couch. Mm -hmm. But until that happens, like there's no way. And then the question that someone said, is CTN worth it? I heard mixed reviews um what you get out of it is what you put into it so like it's it, I mean it's kind of a it's kind of a loaded question like is it worth it well like if you don't have a job and you don't you know what I mean like you're not getting work then it probably is worth it but if someone like is already has a job or like thinks they're not getting any record aren't getting much out of it again it's, it's what you put into it so for me any kind of networking situation Again, like some people will, will go to like GDC and be like, oh, that was lame. I didn't get anything out of it. It's like, well, did you talk to people? And it's like, well, no. Well, then, yeah, of course not. But if you go, you try to like really put your mind to it. You try to really meet people. You try to, you know, talk to directors and try to go to the talks and like learn something. Then, of course, you'll walk away from it being like, oh, yeah, it was really, really well worth it. So in terms of worth it, 
I think any class or anything can be worth it if you if you view it as such. You get what you put in. So if you kind of have things, then yeah, it won't be worth it. But if you're really trying to get something out of it, then you look something out of it. So it's really about effort. 100% agree. Um, um, for the said, shy ones, oh, well, yeah, like I know there's shy people around. So like, let me, I was actually considering myself a very shy person, but it's like a muscle. You guys need to exercise that muscle and meet and talk to people. And, it, and you know, everyone's there for the same thing. So you know that they're already passionate about the arts. So you can just approach people and just be like, it depends what's going on in the situation, but you can be like, oh, did you see this new did you go did you go to this event or did you go to this talk or anything like that and it's uh it just brings people together just because there's so much really valuable information mm -hmm. and you know you, you're passionate about the same things but um Kaylee, how do you feel about it? if someone's shy like how do you approach somebody and and start networking i mean just going to talks can be a good thing i mean networking with the actual artists i mean the artists have tables you know you can add them on instagram you can talk to them and like have conversations with them i mean mm -hmm. you can network by talking to the recruiters i mean all those companies are there literally to talk to you so if there were a time to want to talk to somebody and not feel like am i bothering this person it would be like at a convention because at that point they're like they're literally paid to sit there and talk to you so like they can't be like oh my god this person's annoying it's like dude you know what we're here for so like i think going to mixers going to like just going to little drawing events like they have little life drawing things you can go to just going to like any of those things and then just like looking at people's work talking with people like it's not as hard as you think like everyone is there to like because, and it's not like you don't have anything to talk about. Like if you're if in there, then obviously it's because like you like art. So like, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna go there and be like, hey, you like art? And they're like, I hate art. And I'd be like, then why the hell are you here? It's a weird thing, you know what I mean? So it's like, everyone is there for the, for the same reason you are. So chances are there is some common ground there that you'll find with somebody. And the more you go, the more, and then it's one of those things too, the more you go, you'll probably see the same people all the time. So like there are people that like I didn't talk to in the first couple of years and I kept seeing them and I'm like, oh, hey, like I remember you. And then it's like, then you start talking. So like it, it takes time. Just don't expect it to be like, oh, I'm going to make new friends like that. Sometimes it does take like years, not years, but like you just meet people over time, over time, over time. And then eventually like you just become a familiar face. You know what I mean? So just like, just go and keep going. But at the same time, keep working on your stuff. I mean, if you keep doing that, eventually you will meet people and once you have good work and people enough people that, that can kind of see it it's kind of hard for people to kind of like not take you seriously or not put you in the right position to meet somebody that's important so uh yeah it's just a matter of just if you're shy unfortunately like then i don't know what you're going to do in a studio when you have to like speak about your work in front of people like that's a weird you know what I mean like mm -hmm. eventually you're gonna have to get out of that so like having friends can be a good way to not be so shy like drawing with friends having sketch groups um eventually you will have to talk in front of people and so you have to be confident in what you're doing so um read some books on it if you are shy like there are ways around it like there's always like there are someone there's a book on something for everything whatever That's you're true. going through someone's wrote, wrote, a, wrote a book on it on like how to solve that problem just read a book you'll you'll figure it out but um for me yeah i don't have time for people that are like can't tell me what they need or what they're doing at work because they're too shy like i just don't have time for that so no i understand we gotta get the job done um how do you deal with feeling underqualified um just keep working like right i mean everyone feels underqualified i feel underqualified like i i go into meetings and then like people that have been in the industry for so long are showing their work and I'm like hold like these guys are freaking ridiculous um and they're like all right now now next up is Kalen and I'm like like why do I have to go after that like, <laughs> like why couldn't you have the, the artist go like, why do I gotta sit here and go after that like yeah everyone feels underqualified but like not not everyone's not out to get you people don't don't think about like that like, people think like oh they're talking about me like most mm -hmm. people aren't like no they're not that's a thing it's a, i think i always think that question's a little bit egotistical because it's like it's really your story and your issue most people are just like dude can can you get the job done or am i gonna have to jump yeah, in and do it like most most people are in their own head they're like oh my yeah. god like i messed up and i'm like honestly i'm like they say care. nobody cares <laughs> like, they no might talk cares. about it for like, like five minutes and then worry about their cat you know what i mean yeah, or worry I was like, about literally their kid everyone or worry has about their the... own life right <laughs> yeah, now exactly. going on like so, everyone has life 
going on. So they yeah. do not care about how you flubbed up your presentation like in this meeting like 20 minutes ago. I'm telling you right now, no one gets yeah. so like if you're not feeling underqualified, cool. It's a it's a it's a regular, just know it's a regular thing to feel mm-hmm. and get qualified. Just keep getting better. And eventually you'll get more confident in your work. I mean, feeling underqualified just means like a lack of confidence. Lack of confidence comes from lack of skill. When you do something enough and you're good at it, then like eventually you feel confident. Like now I'm confident that like because I've done environments for so long, when they go, Kayla, I need you to do like the stuff. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I've never done it before, but I'm confident that like I can figure it out because I've been doing this for so long. Like I've, right. I've done so many things in my life that I'm like, if I can do that, I can do this. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I can't explain it to you, but just give me a week. I'll figure it out. I'm like, and if I don't, then I'll ask you. But like, this is confidence. Like mm-hmm. just, and again, it comes from working hard. Like I know that I'm a hard worker, that like I've done this for so long that it's like, I, I can do it. I can figure it out. We'll, we'll go from there. So if you're not feeling quali- if you're feeling underqualified, like welcome to everyone in art school. Not only like, that, you can do it and you'll do a w- good job. Yeah, you know what like I mean? everyone, like, that's everyone where the should confidence feel comes in. And it's, right. it's, it's obviously like a hard, it's obviously harder because you're working with like the, the decks, the, 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 the deck stacked against you because like, it's a little bit easier for me to do easier work because I have a whole studio behind me, right? I have a, I have a production designer that gives me reference photos. I have modelers and animators that give me reference images of the characters. I have modelers that give me blockouts. I have storyboard artists that give me composition. I have a writer that has figured out the story and what we're trying to do. Like I have all these things behind me and I have a studio that's like, hey, what do you need so that you can be dope? As a student, you don't have those things. You have to kind of be your own island. So of course it's, it's easy to feel underqualified, but <clears throat> you can do it. It just takes a lot of work. That's why, that's why art school is so hard um, because you don't have access to all the programs and stuff like that. So you have to kind of do it yourself. So. Mm-hmm. Do you have any artists who still uh, really inspire you? Um, yeah, mostly just personal friends. People like Daniel McGowan. Talked to him recently. You know, you know. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's at Blizzard. He's on the Overwatch team. No, that's yeah. awesome. He's doing. Uh, oh. He's doing levels for Overwatch. Yeah, that's he's, a, he's also a really hard worker, right there. Jeez. Yeah. And so McGowan was uh, obviously a person that taught under Monica as well. Mm-hmm. So people, people don't know Dan McGowan. He's not a famous name or anything like that, but he's one of my favorite people because of his work ethic. He's a good friend to me and he has a good work ethic. Uh, people like Anthony Jones, one of my favorite oh, people, yeah. um, easily changed my life. People like Edgar Cardona, as you know, Monica, Edgar. Yeah. One of my favorite Edgar is a super talented. Yeah. Edgar is amazing. He's one of the people that taught me like how to paint when I first started. Um, so yeah, it's always like personal friends that have, that have been there at different stages in my life. Um, so those are the people that, that inspire me. So like my brother, my mother, my wife, people that inspire me, um, but artistically people like, yeah, like uh, Anthony Jones, uh, Edgar Cardona, um, Daniel McGowan, there's just a list. The rest are all in art station. You know who they are, but those are people that I just think like personally for me are inspirations to me to work harder. And you know them too. So that's amazing. Yeah. And I know them. I know their life all and stuff. Uh, someone says any work that you're proud of if you're, that you're proud of there are some works that I'm proud of but I can't show them unfortunately because they've been oh, recently that's too bad. stuff so there have been a couple of moments for myself where I was like this looks tight and this is dope and I'm like I can't wait to show this to people but I'm like I can't show it um, so yeah there's been a few of those pieces where I'm like or like people look at it and they're like what is going on and I'm like hell yeah um so that happens it doesn't happen very often but when it does happen it's a nice feeling um but I don't get too caught up on those on those like moments you just you just gotta do what you gotta do um but yeah they'll happen you just gotta keep again just keep working and keep doing your thing now we are running a uh running out of time so I do want to ask you another question which is um for your portfolio would you suggest the ratio of finished versus unfinished work I know it's quality over quantity but what what if you only have a few works that you are proud of? Uh, I don't think, I, don't, I think that's the wrong question to ask. It should be, are you showing pipeline? That's, that should be the right question. So if you only have, don't show unfinished work because it doesn't really help mm-hmm. us, show nope. pipeline work. So think about the pipeline of creating art. So if you have sketches that are part of your pipeline to get to the finished piece of art. So like for me, if I have a finished piece of art, we can, we can kind of use this as an example. <laughs> is that I had some pre-sketches before this and then this is the final image right so it's a step it's a stepping stone so it'd be my sketches then the black and white sketches and then the final which would be that right there's there's steps to it you're never just painting one thing by itself and then you're done you have to work your way up right because they don't want you spending 12 hours on a painting and it doesn't work so right. that's why there's stepping stones there's landmarks or milestones that your your director will check in and give you advice and give you feedback 
So show me the pipeline, show me your sketches, show me your thumbnail sketches, then show me like the 3D model, then show me the final, the final image. Show me the process. I don't care about just showing the sketches, show me a process. I need to know how you think mostly because I need to make sure that if I give you a task, are you going to approach it the same way? If you just show me some finished pieces and then I'm like, okay, well, how did you, how did you arrive to that? Was it lucky? Because anyone can get lucky, but I need to know that your thought process makes sense. So that way that I can, I can tailor it and give you advice at certain points of your, of your process. So if you just have a bunch of random sketches, then yeah, don't show it. But if anything, show me a project, show me a process so I can understand mm -hmm. how you got from point A to point B is really, really important. So show me how you got there versus just showing me random things, if that makes sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. Do you start off with the silhouette, then you do the black and white, and then is that is that your process? Or do you yeah, start so off like I had this? Some, I had some small, <laughs> I had some, I don't know where the sketches are, but I had some okay. smaller, like, like I think I had like eight black and white sketches, and then they gave me the models, and I used that and painted over that. So it got small. I went from like eight to four to one. You know Got what it. I mean? It's always like a lot of sketches and then small sketches and then one. So like right now with work, I'm doing like eight sketches right now, eight black and white sketches that are kind of this, kind of at this level of quality. And then I know that they're going to like pick a few of them and I'm going to make those look nice and pick them the color. So um, yeah, that's kind of like how it kind of works. And then someone said, have you, ever, have you ever considered moving to color keys for storyboarding? Um, you kind of do that already as a visitive artist like a lot of times sometimes you're asked to to do color keys like to figure something out so like in theory like this is like a color key actually mm -hmm. like it was mostly to figure out the color and lighting and just the overall mood so it's kind of the same thing like when you're when you're doing small sketches depending on what problem you're solving if it is for color then you will be doing color keys for storyboarding it's mostly about composition and timing so a lot of it you don't need the color for that so it just depends if the director wants that so Hopefully that answers uh, your question. Okay, one last question, and then because uh, we gotta respect your time, are there any recent show, movies, or games that impressed you? Uh, Kane and Bird of Spirits is pretty dope. Uh, that's because I worked on it, but honestly, <laughs> I haven't had much time. But honestly, you all should go play that game. It is pretty cool. It's a labor of love. Like a lot of love went into that game. It's very indie, and hopefully you'll yeah, like it. I posted the trailer on the chat because it's a yeah, beautiful yeah. movie. I mean, yeah. game. It's a, it it's looks a like great a movie. game. A lot of <laughs> cool music. It's just a great vibe. Done by uh, two black directors. You don't see that very often in the game industry. Um, oh, so. I did not know that. Really, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, they're like, I don't understand, man. They're like, they're so like in shape too it makes no sense like they're super buff i'm like how are you working with like a five-man team and you're still buff i Probably figured they would sleeping, be like I'm out of shape guess. but they're like super good looking too and they're just like super in shape and i don't understand like i i could never um but yeah they're really nice people though they're mike and josh greer and um really cool guys so yeah really really proud is to see people of color as directors winning awards like that mm -hmm. that's awesome because uh, there's not very many of us in the industry so um big props to them and then for games, honestly, I don't really have time. I kind of just play whatever whatever my non-artist friends are playing. So like my college, like my like my uh, high school friends that I still hang out with, they all play like Warzone so that I just play Warzone with them. So it's honestly just like whatever, whatever they're playing, I'll play it just because I just want to hang out with my friends. Right. So I don't I haven't had time to like game game in a while. Like I had Kingdom Hearts 3 and then that, that got way out of hand and then I just stopped playing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I do not much have time for gaming. We have the saying, uh, make games, play game, have a life, pick two. And so mm. I'm very much on uh, making games or making content and then having a life. So that means for me, uh, time with the wife, playing soccer. Um, I think soccer is probably my biggest thing right now is like getting back into competitive leagues again and just doing that. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's life. Oh, yeah. Social media plug uh yeah uh if you want to find me i mean i'm not even really on social I, i'm on it but like if you wanted to see stories of my dog then that's pretty much what it what it comes down to nowadays is uh there's my instagram my ig uh <clears throat> so i'm kind of like i'm on social media but i don't really use it that much to be honest like i think my recent thing right here is kaylin art but it's mostly like just random stories of like it's art that I've done over the years that I don't really do anymore but a lot of it is just old stuff so it's just me like posting pictures of my dog to be honest and like when I hang out with my wife so like see like I'm posting memes 
because I'm watching the ultimatum with my wife, <laughs> that dating show. So it's like just stupid stuff. So like, I don't really post like anything, like here's me posting like a soccer video. So like, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really use social media that much. Uh, I kind of just work and luckily I'm in, a, I'm, in, I'm in a nice place where I have enough networking where I don't really need it. But to me, like I always, what my brother always told me is like, you can spend time where you can invest time. So you can spend time like on Facebook, arguing with people on the internet, on Twitter, yeah. or you can invest time. So I right. just choose that when I do use social media, I try to invest time into it and do what I want to do. And I try to avoid a lot of negativity. So I love again, that. Like, art Twitter is kind of toxic. People are just arguing over stupid shit all the time. Like I just, I post my artwork and I leave <laughs> and then that's, and that's it. I just keep it, I keep it moving. So just make sure like, just really know whether or not you're investing time or you're spending time. And if you're spending time, if you're investing time properly, I think you'll get whatever you want to do out of life. This has been fantastic. And by the way, his social media, if you guys look at it, he does post breakdowns of some of his paintings or, or a lot of his art. So feel free to watch those, um, his older posts, because they're actually really, really good. So uh, you'll definitely see how, uh, how, he, how he does the breakdowns and how he just, he's super fast. Like he's just crazy fast. Thank you so much, Kaylin. This was amazing. I think every, you're always inspirational. I always think that you have so much amazing like uh, knowledge to give to students to current professionals to seniors like it's just you're just you know a very positive wonderful person so thank you so much for being here uh i'm grateful i'm sure they're grateful too i can't wait to see your name on the credits i'm going to take a picture i'm going to tag you it's going to be awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks thank you so much and uh yeah it was good to finally uh, see you again again Likewise. everyone give a big thanks to monica because otherwise again i would not i would not come here unless certain people ask me and monica is one of those people that i will always make time for to uh Appreciate come that. And talk to and hang out with so well maybe we'll yeah, see each other at the convention if, yeah, you, I'll see if we ever go to or I'll come by Fremont one of these days when I'm in town oh I love that that'd be awesome get a tour or whatever so yeah for sure so, okay all right well, thank you so much thank you uh, well, I'll see you guys when I see you bye everybody thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for coming take care